stick around. We've got a new way to sniff out air quality. Perhaps your neighbourhood could use it. Are you tired and frustrated with your current job? Would you like a job that took you outside more? How about a job that could actually make a difference to people's lives? Maybe you should become... a nasal ranger. Find out more after the break. probably walk down the street and smelt something pretty nasty. Well, that's OK once in a while. But what happens when every time you step outside your home, there's a nasty odour? What can you do about it? Who can you call? Well, now you can call the Nasal Rangers. Mike McGinley is a Nasal Ranger from St. Croix Sensory in Minnesota. Now, a Nasal Ranger sounds kind of like a superhero, doesn't it, Mike? <laughs> yes. What have you got? <laughs> this is an instrument that helps you quantify odors, and it does that by acting as a dilution device. So it dilutes the odor, and you can find out how much you needed to dilute it to bring it to the odor threshold and give you a value for how strong the odor was. Can we see it in action again? Sure, <laughs> sure. Basically, I first start off by getting breathing through at 100% carbon filtered air. So that means when I'm sniffing right now, we're breathing through, all the air is going through these carbon filters and taking out all the odor out of the air. So all I'm breathing is nice, cool, fresh, odor-free air. Okay. And then when I'm ready, I turn it to the first position, which is a 60 position. And what does, what's the 60 and at a six, mean? At a 60 position, 60 parts of air are gonna go through the carbon filters, and one part of air is gonna go through the small orifice at the front. Okay, so And so I sniff through. And I simply ask myself if I'm smelling anything so you've or not. Got 60 parts nice air with one part ambient air, and you're not getting anything there. Exactly right. Yeah. Because I can smell something. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know we're out in the middle of nowhere, but there is a kind of yep. um, smokestack over there. Mm -hmm. Yep. And when I, when I was measuring before, I was getting around a four here. So when you're using the device, you continue to progress down. The second position is 30 parts of of carbon filtered air to one part of odor free or of the odorous air and I continue to go down and I at the four position I notice the odor. So what we're smelling now is four parts of um, dilution oh, yep. in here. Okay. Yep. And so how bad is a four? A four is is not so bad. That might be what you would experience in your normal everyday life. Um, when you're on a street corner it's pretty low odor but as maybe a bus or a line of cars pass by it might creep up into the two and four range. And the industry standard is, is around a seven, where if you're measuring a seven or higher, that would be known to be an annoyance to the community. So this is cool, this new piece of technology then, it gives you a kind of a numerical standard for it. But what if you want to know what the smell is? How do you figure that out? Whenever you're using this, you'd couple that with sniffing the air and describing the odor that you're noticing, adding a character to it, describing it as whether it's sewery or manure or cabbage smelling or even rose-like, depending on where you are or what industry you're near. So that's where your training comes in then, as correct, a laser ranger correct. to kind of characterize yeah. that air. Yes. And how would you describe this? Uh, it's a little bit of a solventy smell, pretty, pretty, pretty basic general character to it, yeah. And what's the kind of worst situation you've ever been in? What's the <laughs> smelliest situation you've Every had? Every industry has its nasty odors, let me tell you. But, uh, you know, animal processing and, and uh, some of the, the landfill odors or wastewater treatment odors are definitely up there as, as what are the, the worst or most annoying to communities. And what's the most bizarre situation you've ever encountered? <laughs> an, an unusual one is where you can run into even a nice smelling industry, like a can candle manufacturing industry, where people are actually complaining of a nice potpourri smell roaming through the neighborhood. But when you have that every day, day in and day out, that can be annoying to people. So, so at the end of the day then, you've come out here, you've done your assessment, you've got your, your numerical value and you've mm -hmm. given it some kind of character. Yep. Um, rotten cabbages maybe. Right, exactly. What happens next? Next you would take that information and now you'd look back at the facility and back at the source. And you'd look at taking source odor samples that you can then bring to the laboratory for perception analysis with humans and look at how strong the odor is from that standpoint. So the next step then is to the lab. Yes. Okay, we will go to the lab after the break. Join us then. Just before the break, we saw what nasal rangers do when they're outside. Now, let's see how they take it to the lab.
Well, today we're going to be going up and collecting an odor sample from a smokestack that uh, there's been some complaints in the neighborhood, so we're going to go and quantify the odors coming out of the stack. Phil Gerard is an air emissions principal for Pynchon Environmental. If the Ministry of the Environment gets a complaint about a smelly factory, he collects air samples directly from the offending smokestack. Hey, Malcolm, how's the sampling going? According to Phil, detection of a smell and recognition of a smell are two different things. If you can recognize or identify a smell, then it's already too strong to be at an acceptable level. Detection is more subtle. If you're walking along a uh, street, for example, and you walk by a bakery, you could smell the fresh bread or cookies or whatever it is breaking inside. You'd know right then that you're well into the recognition level of the odor. If you're walking by a plant, unless you were looking for an odor or trying to detect, you'd never really sense it. So recognition, you could easily pick out, smells like a bakery, and you know that it's well above and beyond the detection level. What Phil is interested in is detecting odors that might become offensive. Because the gas emission collected directly from the stack is concentrated, it has to be diluted. So it resembles the air we would breathe if we were walking down the street past the smokestack. So in order to get that subtle measurement of detection, the gas emission is diluted with purified nitrogen. So that particular bag is uh, full at this point now. We're going to take it off, put a cap on it so the air doesn't leak out. We put it in a uh, dark case to prevent it from sunlight degradation. And then ultimately it goes and gets analyzed in the lab within 24 hours. Okay, Malcolm, let's get the uh, sample to the olfactometer for analysis. This olfactometer dilutes the odor in the bag until it can no longer be detected. First up, Phil breathes a clean sample. Then slowly, air from the contaminated sample is added in increasing concentrations. Every time Phil breathes in, he tries to detect any changes in the air until eventually he can detect and recognize the odor. So in that particular sample, I think I detected the odor. I registered a response. Then he's increased the concentration once again just to make sure that I was correct and I wasn't guessing. So I'll try one last time. In that particular instance, the concentration was now sufficient for me. I detected it on the last presentation. Now I can characterize it. I recognize it as being a sweet smell. So that's the subtle difference between detection. As you increase further, I can now recognize the odor. This technology is a valuable tool for helping us accurately measure odors. But what makes this machine so interesting is that it works in conjunction with the human nose to help us detect and measure smells. Everything is relying on the nose, the human assessor. They've tried different uh, pieces of chemical equipment to analyze odors, break it down into chemical constituents, but it still falls back to the human nose is still the, uh, the receptor that we use, the detector. As the world continues to industrialize, odor detection is key to keeping our air as clean as possible.